Thanks for joining now. Yes, bro. What are you saying? Hi there, Ryan. You good, bro? Yeah, I'm good, mate. All good. Finally got this set up. I'm a nightmare. I'm like an old man with all this technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, appreciate you coming on, man. Because obviously, like I said, you you haven't done one of these before, so thank you for jumping on. That's um, right, man. No worries. We'll give it a couple minutes just to let people, uh, a couple seconds, sorry, to just let people join up. Uh, but how's your day been? You been alright? Yeah, it's been alright. It's longer than normal, you know. It's like I got up early. I'm normally laying in, so yeah. yeah. Do do any do any exercise today or just chill? Yeah, I'm, yeah. They told us to taper off a bit in terms of what we're doing, and obviously okay. the news the news broke that League Two's cancelled, so. Yeah. Them, yeah, I've still done a run though. It just gives me something to do. No, I mean, so. What about Back you? Do anything? Uh, no, not today really. I just uh, ran around and done a couple of things outside that I needed to, but just chilled other than that. I've been watching that new uh, Jordan documentary. Uh, yeah, I know. Like, it's, it's jarring though because there's two every week. So I've been yeah. smashing the two out straight away and then you've got to wait a whole week. <laughs> to be fair, I just kind of started today, but I'm on uh, episode eight, so. I'm, I'm decent. Yeah, you've been banging it out, then. Yeah. Banging it. <laughs> but yeah, all right, cool, bro. Let's get this started, man. So uh, yeah, no uh, yeah, just give a little introduction on who you are, where you you originate from, and who you currently play for. Yeah, well, obviously, it depends how far you want to go back. I've, I'm currently at Crystal Palace on loan at Newport until today. I think, obviously, we're waiting for the confirmation of League Two getting cancelled. I don't know if you saw that. So, yeah. but yeah, no, I've uh, been at Palace since I signed when I was 14. So I've been there, what's that, coming up 11 years now. Funny yeah. enough, I'm the longest serving player there and I've played one game for the first team. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, a bro, let, me, let me take it back. So in terms of football and where it all started for you, what's kind of your first memories about football? Football? Uh, there was a local side to me called Seymour Villas. So okay, anyone yeah. was... In, in Beckenham? Yeah. yeah, down at Beckenham. He used to play at um, Beckenham Rec. And uh, God bless his soul, Martin actually passed away. So he used to let um, have my brother on my... Me and my brother used to play. We was in a B team down there because uh, we couldn't play the subs. So we were playing there for a bit. And then, um, yeah, I was in a tournament. We actually um, played against a team called Palace Guard. And they used to they used to get to ball boy for Palace. So at the time, I hadn't really been to much live football. So I thought, oh, if I get down there. They was actually like in a lower league. So I went there, got there, and then got ball boy in straight away. Played there for a bit and then bounced on the... They're still about, I think. Have you heard of Fisher Athletic? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so a lot of my friends, I'm still good friends with a lot of people from there. They took me to there, but that was a massive jump up in respect to where I was with football. I was still kicking about at school. But in terms of, like, I was playing, like, South Central. I don't know if they still do the Tandridge in the same way. Yes, no, well, the Tandridge, yeah, but they they kind of class it as A, B, C, D, E. Yeah. And it goes North, South, East. That's yeah, what I was going to so say. So, in, yeah. So, but in respect, though, there was A, B, C, D. But then below that, this was like below them, but then it was kind yeah, of regional. Yeah, yeah. So, we was below that, but then we jumped up. We ended up going into the Kent League, which is still quite renowned now. So, like Cray Wanderers, teams like that. So, yeah. I went there, but they actually trained down the bottom of my road. So, I used to live at, um, you know, Penji's train station. Yeah, yeah. Just up there, but the Sydenham site. So, I was like, oh, what a touch. I can just go down there. But yeah, went there. They had uh, two mill coaching coaches coaching twice a week. So I was like, we're doing proper drills. We're not just getting a ball five aside, have a few shots at a goalkeeper. Yeah. But for my development, that was massive because I thought, oh, this is this is you know what I mean. I need to make a step up. But um, you must know from your way, obviously, in terms of making the next step up. I was playing school football, Kelsey Park. That's where I was at. And then um, I played a year up because my brother was the year up. So I used to go and train with him and things like that. And Mr. Hollidge, obviously, ended up yeah. at Forest Hill. He let me play a year up. And then um, I met a few boys. Lamar Hurley was at West Ham. Uh, Yasin was at Reading at the time. And then obviously Nigel Nita, I'm still good friends with. I owe a lot to him because he basically put me in touch with Errol, which a lot of people, if they're watching, they know Errol. So, um yeah, then he took me basically straight away to... Ar I went on trial at Arsenal. I'm an Arsenal fan. Okay. Had one had one session as a centre mid and that was it. I got got released, so I knew I had some work to do from there. <laughs> <laughs> in terms in terms of that first experience, obviously that's your first sort of trial. Like you said, after one session, you, they're telling you or they're releasing you. How did that kind of feel for you? No, uh, to be honest, I I was devastated. Like I said, I was a centre mid at the time. I was listen. Anyone sees me now, obviously I'm six foot five. Like I wasn't always this big, so I thought, oh, you know. Centre mid would be my position. I used to get up and down the pitch, but obviously 
in that position, I was nowhere near the level. I went there one session. You, you get given a six-week trial, put it that way. Yeah. And I, I've been in teams where players come in on trials, you know what I mean? That They get a few weeks at least, but yeah, one. So I must have been <laughs> that bad, they said. <laughs> oh, mate, like, I don't know what's going on, but yeah. But yeah, <laughs> so, I, well, after, uh, after the Arsenal trial, how old was you and what was kind of your next step? Yeah, so it all happened in like a cluster. So I, I was 14. I, I went back to Fisher Athletic. And then, to be fair to Errol, he was, he stuck with me, do you know what I mean? So, he then put me in at Charlton. They said they would assign me, but I had, like, I was good slides on my knees. Okay. So, I said, oh, yeah, no, I'll, go, I'll go back to Fisher. I was playing at Fisher, and then, obviously, Palace were watching at the time. I got put in there, and they signed me, but it was all within, like, a year. I got those trials and things like that. But also, I had, I had a time at Millwood during this, and they went, oh, we had a trial game. And they said, oh, well, any, anyone play centre-half? Centre back, I said, Yeah, like, I'll play there. Then I played there, and I think it went from there almost like I was seen as a centre back. Okay. So it was, it was quite funny because obviously I ended up going into Crystal Palace as a centre back, but I'd only played there for you're talking a couple months just from yeah. that Millwall to Errol seeing me playing that to then putting me in at Palace as a, as a centre back. So fair enough, and yeah, so talk us through that feeling obviously when you got to Palace and you, you had a successful trial and they, they said, yeah, we're going to sign you. How, how was that feeling for you? Yeah, so obviously I, I got there. I still had the knee problem, so it was ongoing and I was, I was very upset because I couldn't train fully. And they pulled me in and said, look, right, we're going to sign you. And I said, oh, you know, I just want to play football. Things that, They said, look, don't worry about the training, just just play the games. They was, they was really good with me at that age. So I was playing on a Saturday and then I was training when I could. And that sounds... I was picking and choosing, but at that age, I wanted this and I still do. I want to play as much as I can. But um, yeah, and then I kind of grew out of that. So I've I got to thank them a lot. So obviously, because we trained on Astro all the time. Obviously, as you get older, it's, it's more grass. So it was up at the National Sports Centre. But yeah, just kind of progressed from there. But obviously, I was buzzing. It was around the corner. So it kind of worked out for me. And obviously, it definitely has because I'm still there. So I've had a touch in that respect. So... Like you're 14, uh, you know that within the next two years you're kind of looking for a scholarship. How how are those two years for you? Obviously, after recovering from the the Oscars. Yeah, so I got back from the Oscars, and then we at the time Palace. So it's all different now with the EPP. We used to play against Chelsea, Arsenal, West Ham. So uh, if you like the, the top academies, and I was playing as a centre half now. So. We played against Arsenal a few times and we had a real good team. Like, we was rough and ready, but there was a few players that were wanted in our team. And then come the next season, what would I have been, 15, so we was, like, under 16s. We was um, we was playing against all those. We was doing well. And I actually got called up to go to the um, the, the England training camp. But I'd only been, obviously, I only played a select few games. So I was like, oh, this, this all happening so fast. I didn't know what to do with myself. And then, obviously, with that coming came the the offer of a scholarship almost straight away. So, yeah, it was all you know, quick. So, yeah, two things there. So, in terms of England and getting that call-up, what was that feeling like? Because, obviously, not a lot of people get that opportunity to represent their country. Yeah, And, no. obviously, I know, I know as well that you, you also captained England. So, again, how was that experience for you? Yeah, I, I laugh about it now. It's still someone, mate. So, obviously, where I was brand new to academy football and I'd come from Fisher, which was obviously a step up in itself, we um we got called up to the camp and I can't don't quote me on this. There must have been sixty odd players and it was like split training sessions, all these things. But you had you had boys coming from all over the country. But like I remember, like it was yesterday, the Man U boys, the Arsenal boys, they their technique was crazy. I'd only had probably <laughs> six six months worth of a year tops of top training. Do you know what I mean? Like I've come from Seymour Villas like a year and a half ago, school football. So yeah. I'm looking at these players like they're spraying the ball left foot, right foot. I'm sitting there like honestly, it was the weird. Like I look back at it now, it's funny. It probably made me who I am. But like I thought, what am I doing here? Like I've got no clue. But the only the only thing I've always had, and obviously I've, I thank my mum for this, is I'm I'm very loud. So like I'd, I'd give information. Like I've never really been shy about being yeah. loud on the pitch. And I think that's what kind of got me there. They're looking at it, thinking, oh, who's this big lump at the back? Like he's you know dominating, talking to players. But in terms of technique and understanding the game like I, I was miles off these players but I was never shy to ask which is I'm proud of myself for because we still laugh about it now so a lad called Joe Rothwell and Ben Pearson Ben's Ben's kicked on and so is Joe they're both playing in the championship but I went to my boys like they looked at me as if I had three heads I went oh boys like how do you uh, 
you know when you take it out your feet and you just do the daisy cut like yeah, spray yeah, it yeah. low I was like, boys couldn't sure us how to do that good job like, I, honestly, I, had, like, I just i just didn't have the, i didn't have the tech basically and they was like looking at me and said this guy really asked you this and then yeah, they 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 sat with me and we was doing this passing and thinking and just doing these things and messing about nice. and obviously but uh, yeah so in terms of that representing the country playing that first game how how was that feeling the the atmosphere the build up all of that sort of stuff yeah it was crazy I, i'll be honest i um my first thing in the game, I definitely, definitely blagged it. I just, I just, <laughs> I was so nervous. The occasion was so big. I managed to just psych myself up for it to even get out there because how the, the call-up came about was funny. The first two games, the squad got released. I wasn't in the first one. I wasn't in the second one. So I remember I was staying at my auntie's at the time because my home situation wasn't the best. And I remember crying. I was crying for ages. And my auntie's like, what's wrong with you? Because when I got called up to the camp, you get all the agents trying to, to sign you and all the boot companies. So I'm sat in this room with, I must have had no joke, Don. I must have had 50 pairs of boots. I'm not exaggerating. And I'm just <laughs> crying, like, what's happened? What's happened? And I'm sitting there, like, no, I'm, you know, I thought I was betting in him. I, I'm, you know. Anyway, we, um, I got called up. So I get called up, funny enough, for Northern Ireland away. We get yeah. all the way there. I'm buzzing. I've got through all the nerves. Game gets cancelled. So I'm like, what? That game gets rearranged. So that was the second one, I think. And I'm not in the squad. So I was like, oh, the time I got called up, it's been cancelled. But obviously, I ended up getting called up for the, the last game, Scotland. We couldn't make it up. I was so nervous. Blagged it. Anyway, it goes up for the, obviously, I don't know if you've seen the goal. I go to head it. Miss the header. Hits my shoulder. Goes in the top bin. And we win. <laughs> and, we win and we win the, and we win the uh, competition. And it was on the sky. So, yeah. Love like, listen. Love <laughs> but, yeah, back to, back to Palace and... Um... Obviously now you've got your scholar, you know you know you're secure for two years. Talk 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 me through the scholar years and how that kind of felt for you and uh, how you kind of did it during those years. Scholar years was yeah. So I um I was up with the scholars when I was so to once that England call up come about so the, the years merge as you get older. So basically I wasn't a scholar yet, but I was up with the youth team. So and I was and I was playing or I was in and out playing. I remember I played in the youth cup. Yeah, I think, I think I think Sam. Uh, I don't know if you know Sam that used to play for West Ham. Um, Sam, ah, uh, last name. I can't. Al Balfi. I can't pronounce. Maybe it. yeah, I probably know his face. Uh, I'm better with faces than names. Like, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I think you do know him, but he. I remember me and him were speaking the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, right." Oh, Sammy. He used to go to my primary school. I think. Yeah, Sam. Sam. Yeah, I, yeah, no, no, it was Sam. I think he went to my yeah. primary school. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, he was. So in terms of that, um, he was telling me how he was playing for West Ham and you was playing for Palace, but you was a couple of years obviously yeah. younger than him. So mm-hmm. you played, you played up in the youth cup then. So no, it was good. We um, played, yeah, played up for a bit, and then obviously when my youth scholar come about at the time, I'd done one year and then I was offered an early pro. So obviously I'd done the uh, sixteen to seventeen and then took the pro at seventeen. But yeah, I remember being when I was. 16, I think it was, or just before 17. I, I got um, I was on the bench for the first team a couple. So this all this all happened so quick because you get the recognition from England, and at the time Palace wasn't as big as they were now. Yeah. So it was a it was a big thing, and then obviously they put you training with the first team, things like that, to keep an eye on you. So then yeah, I managed. I think we were safe one year in the championship. I got on the bench against Southampton and Birmingham away. So now now, now the dreams are alive. I'm like, like, you know, within a year I've gone from two years school football Fisher Athletic to do you know what I mean I'm, I'm on the bench for the first team yeah so yeah no I quit. Uh, how, can I explain that feeling because obviously it's a, it's a roller coaster of a calling me can I not turn it off uh, so yeah, yeah. Do nah that. you can't you know oh, I just got slapped it yeah, yeah. I, I just I know some, to, someone's seen them on live and they, they buzz me basically I know what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> you know what right, mean? yeah yeah in terms of that, you had, like you said, the, the roller coaster was like a two year span where it kind mm. of all went from uh, Seymour Villa, Fisher to England. So maybe talk us through how you kind of handled that because obviously it's a lot to take in over, yeah. over a short space of time. Yeah, no, so obviously, them years football wise kind of merged together, but off the pitch, not so much. So from I left home when I was 14. So you can imagine at the time of getting all this going from 
Fisher to an academy school football. I actually left home, so I was living here, there and everywhere, really. I started off living with a mate from a uh, school and then just bounced around, really. I met Errol, so I was staying at my auntie, things like that. So all that was kind of consuming me as well. But obviously at the age, you can't really sit back and analyse and be like, you know, I need to take some, just kind of look into things. I was just rolling into things. I didn't really have a father figure about. So I was just taking it as it comes. And it all just kind of, it all obviously, like you said, the squad, the scholar years, somehow from going from nothing, 14, school football, loving the game, to I'd probably say 17, yeah, where I was old enough to kind of, obviously not legally, but go out and things like that. The attractive side of football, which a lot of players get caught up in, obviously, the going out. A lot of boys were gambling at the time, going out, drinking. That all kind of, I kind of lost who I was, do you get what I mean, somewhere along the way. Yeah. But I don't make excuses, but I was kind of teaching myself as I was going along, do you know what I mean? And trying to pluck little things from different people. But yeah, I definitely lost focus on who I was along the way in those years, I'd say. Okay. So yeah, um, so you you get your pro. Um, obviously, at the time, it's all it's all kind of nice because you've, you've done the England, you, you're training with the first team in and out and stuff like that. How was your first year as a pro? And... Did you go on loan? Did you stay in the in the reserves or twenty threes at the time? What kind of was your process? Yeah, so I was I wasn't with the first team. I trained here and there. So my agent basically said to me, "Look, like you need to go on loan." And I remember it vividly because he said, "Look, Luton were in the conference at the time." He said, "You know, want you to develop, go to Luton." And I'm uh, listen, boys are the same now. I turned around and said, "Oh, come on, wow, I'm training with the first. I don't want to go in the conference." And that's why I've been with my agent ever since. He said, look, you need to get professional games. And that's what I'd love to say to the young boys now. Obviously, I'm still young, but 17, 18, if you can get out on loan, no matter what the level, just get out and get the games. Because if the day does come where it doesn't work out at your club, you've got a CV. Because youth team games and reserve games, they don't build you up a CV to then kick on afterwards, if you know what I mean. Because managers, most managers I've experienced in League One, League Two conference will be like, well, how many first team games have you played? You yeah. could have been the best reserve player, but you need to be able to prove it against men. So, yeah, I went out to Luton and it was a lot of things that happened to me that young were strange. We went in and the weather was terrible. So it was um, John Steele was the manager, Andre Gray up front, Cam McGee in the midfield. It was a good side. They were top of the league. They were absolutely flying. And um, I think I played two games and then the games kept getting cancelled. Cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. And he pulled me in one day and he said, look, right, obviously we've basically won... We basically won the league. But um, Jill and them have asked, they're in League One, you know, they, they want to centre off. We're more than happy to go. I said, oh, no, Gaffer, I'm buzzing you brought me. It was my first taste of, like, first team environment. So now I was, I was hooked. I was addicted. I yeah. was, in the, like, in the team at Luton. And he said, no, right, it'd be good for you to go and try and test yourself at League One. Like, we've basically got the, the conference sewn up, got players that can come in, go and test yourself at League One level. So, um, yeah, I took the opportunity. I thank John Still, and then I ended up with Peter Taylor at Gillingham, and that was and that's where I was. And in terms of that first loan, uh, how how was it in terms of leaving home and or not leaving home, but because obviously you said you moved out from quite young, but moving away and having a new experience somewhere else. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so I remember. Well, I've done it a lot now, and obviously it's, it takes its toll on you after a while. Obviously, we'll get to that. But yeah, obviously you stay in a hotel. I didn't drive at the time. I didn't drive till late. I was lazy as. I, was always, I had a flat by Palace training ground and I just didn't motivate myself to drive. I can't believe I didn't for so long. So yeah. if you haven't got your licence and you're listening, do that ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't drive till I was 21, but that's lazy. But yeah, no, so you basically, I'm down there. So I was on the train, all my gear. You literally get told, listen, you're going on loan. Like, and most of the time for me, they happen at the end of the window. So right, right, you're going to loot and bosh, straight on the train with all my bags. There I am. And then you're in training the next day and you just, you're thrust into an environment where you're meeting 25 new lads. Yeah. And at that time, obviously I'm still young, but I've been around a little bit. I've played against a few players and but at the time I didn't know no one. And it's it's like anything, you, you start a new job, everyone's sussing you out. So that side of things is you've got to be kind of uh, thick skinned. And I've learned a lot from, I've learned bits from every different loan I've had, whether I've played well, played bad, but I've met some great characters, so... It's been good. Yeah. No, so in terms of your next loan in Gillingham, kind of how, how did that experience go for you? Or was it, a, was it a good one? Was it maybe something that you, you look back on and said, maybe I could have done more in my time there? How was that next loan for you? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I squandered my time at Gillingham. I, uh, I met some good, good friends, and I'm still good friends with them. But they wouldn't mind me admitting we focus on having a good time rather than playing. I, I started really well there. We played against them. Um, we were training really well, and then I got straight into the team for the Saturday. And I, you'll laugh at this. For some reason, I'm messing around on a Friday with Elliot Hewitt and Ducky, and we're doing the Ronaldo free kick, just come in fashion. Okay. So I'm messing around trying to do this. I thought, I've done something to my quad it. I'm trying to wobble this ball. Like, I've got no chances, like 10 <laughs> balls in the hedge. So I thought to myself, anyway, I didn't say, hey, I'm, I live with Elliot Hewitt. I went, oh, geez, woke up next day, day of the game. I went, my quad's in tatters. He went, nah, it's all in your head, mate. You've only played a couple of get that winding me up kind of thing. Anyway, we played. We had Sheffield that day. Played, I think, first 45 minutes, come out second half, and I've done, I've done my quad straight away. So I was like, but Peter Taylor was good with me. He said, look, you're good around the dressing room. I want you here to learn. You'll still learn a lot, heck of a lot, watching the boys, observing the boys, and then hopefully we can get you back from injury as soon as possible and then get a few games for the end of the season. But that didn't really materialise. So in terms of them loans, even if you look at, if you go on Wikipedia or whatever, I probably had another, don't even quote me on this, at most like a handful of games. Probably... That's it. So they're very bit part, but so uh, yeah. So in terms of the next season, obviously you've been on two loans, Luton and um, and Gillingham. So in terms of going back to Palace for the next year, was it a case of let me try and play first team football here or get into the first team now, or was it again I want to go out on more loans and, and learn my trade? Yeah, it was. It was. It's always you want to be with the first team, but at this stage where I, where I've been away boys were doing well as, as well as I was. It was it was a strange time because it was almost like you're not ready for the first team, which they were correct, absolutely. So let's just get him back out on loan. And I've always said to myself, and even now, like I've, this season, oh, this is my best run I've had injury-wise. And then obviously coronavirus comes about, obviously health first, but I was flying this year in terms of when I was available for selection. And then, you know what I mean, the season's over. But at that stage, it was just all about, and it's, it still is all about being reliable and getting yourself 35 plus games, 35 out of 44, 40 games a season. And then, because I've always said to myself, my agent said the same to me, look, and I've never had a problem with, I just, I just want to find my level now. And at probably 18, 19, I got to that point because you end up swimming around in like a bit of a grey area, like contracted to Palace, which is great, but I'm not nowhere near the first team pretty much. Then I'm going on loan, and when you're a lone play, you're part of it, but you're not, you know, come end of the season, you're looking again. So, yeah, I, just, I kind of grew into a stage where I just wanted to find a home, find my level and, and try and build from there. So if that was League One or League Two, then so be it. But you can't do that without playing 40 games. I think everyone was in the same boat as myself, like almost like, how good is he? Is he, is he League Two or can he, can he be champ or prem? So, yeah, so in terms, of, in terms of that, like I said, you've been on... I know, I know that you've been on, I think, eight or nine different loans. Since plenty then. loans, plenty so, loans. So in terms of finding your level, do you think you have found it yet? Do you think that there's this, obviously, you might not have completed a full season enough to tell yourself that. How, how do you think you're, you feel about that? Yeah, no, definitely. Listen, there's always room to go higher. There's, there's players in the Prem that have happily said, oh, you know, I, I don't think I would have got to this level. But as things stand, like, I think League 2, League one's my level because that's all, that's all I've proven. Do, yeah. do you get what I mean? And yeah. this season, I, I didn't start great and then I've, I've played decent towards the end. So I would say at the moment, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not deluded. Like, yeah, I'm probably a League 2 player. But that's, I'm not comfortable staying a League 2 player. But I was comfortable this year in terms of how my body was, how f- fit I felt. And I was always available for the team. Obviously, I had a couple of send-ins off and obviously on bands. But that I was happy with that. And for a lot of players, they wouldn't really understand that because they've never really had many injuries. Do you get what I mean? But yeah. I've had so many that I just I just want to be able to be reliable for a team. And then, listen, if I played 40 games and someone goes, God, he's done all right. Like, we'll have him. I'll be able to move with that because... Always at anyone's back of their mind, they know what they're capable of. Whether that's yeah. whether you've <laughs> blown your head up a little bit more, obviously that might drive you on, but that's each to their own, you know. Yeah. So in terms of um, as well, you you've been at Palace as a pro for 
six, seven years. And obviously, like you said at the start, you've only made one appearance for Palace. So in your mind, do you see yourself staying at Palace in the near future? Do you see yourself going somewhere else to just find a home and play some solid football? Yeah, well, as you get older and time goes on, put it this way, I've been very fortunate to still even be at Palace, obviously, for the amount of games I've given them back. But it's been a weird journey for me. And sometimes, like I said, it's proving what I was capable of. So there's, this is my guess. I, I don't know, obviously, the club's thinking, but if they let me go and I had a full season and, and went and done really well, they didn't know what my ceiling was. So it was like, OK, we'll give them another year. We'll give them another year kind of thing. And then I ended up going out to Colchester. And that's probably the best season I've ever had. I felt at home. It was local. So all these things culminated for me. And then i done really well. And I think there was a little bit of interest. But I can't quote that. But they then offered me a new longer term deal. Okay. And that's kind of how I'm still there now. So obviously they might have thought, you know, this is, they may have thought, I don't know this for sure. Look, we're happy with him. Like he's done really well. This kind of interest is coming at this level. Like he'd be an asset for us. This was at the time. Now we're going back three years. You know, so things have changed. Obviously, I didn't progress as of how I would have liked and how the club foresaw it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have offered me that contract. But that's well, the situation. How I see it as well, if the clubs are offering you new deals, they obviously see the potential in you and see that your growth isn't at its peak yet. So, no, just keep doing what you're doing in that sense. Um, but yeah, in terms of this season, like you said, you was at Newport and maybe tell us how that kind of experience was because that was your, your season this year. Yeah, no, I've thoroughly enjoyed it this season. It's a, it's a real good group down at Newport, as in that it's tight-knit. They've had, um, they survived the relegation on the last day with a small squad. They haven't got a massive budget, but we everyone gets on. We started off really, really well. I was I got into the team after four or five games, and um, yeah, I just had a bit of trouble at the start. I got a red card, which was like kind of dropped back into my old ways. Saw red, but I bounced back from it, which was quite big for me because I could have. Well, first and foremost, they could have just sent me back to Palace, and that would have been terrible for me. Like I'd have been disappointed yeah, in myself. Yeah. I didn't get the chance to you know, prove my worth to them. They stuck with me, so I've got massive respect for them and that. And then that drove me on to try and repay them on, on the pitch. But yeah, obviously, like, we we died out about... We took a hiding from Colchester away, probably after 15 games and kind of wobbled from there. Then we resurged a bit. It's, it's a tough, tough level. There's a lot of teams and that are all capable of going on a run. So it's just it's maintaining that for as long as possible. No, for sure. Um, and in terms of highs and lows, maybe tell us what you see as one of your your proudest, one of your highest moments in your career so far. And if you can, what what are, are one of your lowest or not lowest, but uh, uh, something you look at and say, oh, I should have done differently in my career? Yeah, well, I'll start, we'll start with the highs. Um, without a doubt, like, even looking back at now, I definitely didn't take it for granted at the time. But obviously, playing for England was like, that's a huge thing. And I did kind of understand it at the time. But obviously, now as I get older, I understand it more. Like, representing your nation's a beautiful thing, do you know what I mean? No matter what level. So, and I'm quite blessed to have dual nationality. So, I was chatting to my missus about it the other day. Obviously, I've recently been, which is why I've been gutted about this season, obviously called up to represent Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. So yeah, I was supposed to go to Canada for two games on that. So in terms of like goals and targets, that's definitely one thing I want to try and get back into. When once the games are up and running, obviously I was in that squad, so I'm looking forward to doing that. But yeah, um, I've definitely had more lows and highs in my career, which is which is a shame. But they're all things I've learned from. So I'm hopefully I'm geared up to to have more highs, you know. But yeah, like I'll, I'll throw in with the highs with the people I've met and the lessons I've learned. No, I'm finally listening and observing. <laughs> you couldn't tell me. <laughs> I didn't do enough of that when I was younger, which is which is a shame, you know. And I, I do try and help the younger boys now. So, but they no. probably think, how can you tell me what to do? But it's because <laughs> I've been where you are it. now, and and the the money's way more than what it used to be. Do you know what I mean? And it's tougher to get in, and you see that in the lower leagues. That's why I'm saying it's difficult because the better the better the quality in the the higher leagues, the lads are trickling down. The quality is trickling down, so it's yeah. tough. You even you you must have seen conference games yourself. There's, I wouldn't say there's much difference between conference and and league two. 
Yeah, personally, I think I've watched um, some of the top end conference games recently, and it's like me personally, they could be in League Two and be be doing well in League Two. It's hundred percent. There's not much difference, like you said. So nice. The standard is very high now, and it's down to, like you said, the players to to take that advice on board from people like you who have been there and done that to to kind of learn and experience new things. But hopefully. You know, I wasn't um, I wasn't void of people to teach me as well, but that's the that's the thing. So obviously I had Errol there, yeah. and my own, own side of the family were there, coaches, everything you meet, but it's until you're ready to learn yourself then and listen, it's it's not gonna happen, do you know what I mean? But I'll keep plugging away and trying to help. <laughs> no, definitely. And yeah, no, in terms of maybe a bit of advice for any young footballers that are watching and uh trying to trying to learn or take some motivation or inspiration away from this, what would your words be um, for them? First and foremost, don't don't lose why you started. Like, everyone wants, loves the tree, wants to be a footballer, but there's also that motive on the side, whether that's to, to take care of your family or someone said you couldn't do it. Some, that driving force, um, I kind of lost that along the way somewhere. And then there's a lot of pitfalls. I've been... I talk to her about it a lot. I talk to to I speak to someone from the PFA now, and it, you know, in, there's a few I can name. Obviously, drinking, going out where the money's good, gambling is was massive when I was a scholar. Maybe not so much now. I don't really see what it's like at scholars. But to think like out of 18 players at scholar level, one or two will get pro top whack. But by the time you leave your scholarship, you're used to being that that guy that guy around your area that was academy. You're you was a face, you was popular, you had money. So you almost become accustomed to being that guy that had the car or had the money. So you're always gonna, they're always going to try and find means to keep yeah. that. Do you get what I mean? So whether you fall into what you do after that to try and accumulate that money or that, that fame, listen, there's no problem. And if you do get let go by a club, not to say you won't bounce back, but you find something else you like, a different profession. But oh. yeah. It's just, it's too many. Like, if you, if you ask me a question specifically as in, like, the gambling, like, because I had a phase of doing that a lot of players have or going out drinking and partying, I've done that. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not a saint now, but I know my body. I know what's, what I can do and what I can't do. And and when the time is right in terms of performance and what you, what's allowed within or what's not frowned upon, if you like, with yeah. football kind of thing. No, for sure. Um and yeah, in terms of growing up or even t- till today, because you're still currently playing, who who are kind of your idols uh, on the pitch and off the pitch? Who are the people you kind of look up to? Yeah, I was I was big time Arsenal because of my uncle Sam, and I am. I still watch this clip on YouTube. If anyone is a centre half, you got to put in uh, Tony Adams, art of, leader- oh, art, art of leadership. It's got this, <laughs> so, I can't remember what the song's called. They, they basically put this like classical song to it. He's swanning about just. <laughs> heading things diving about so if I'm ever struggling for a bit of motivation I'll just put that on because it's quite a nice mix he's running around like clearing everyone out heading balls and it's like some classical music so yeah but funny obviously I was sent him in for ages um, yeah. Steven Gerrard I loved him I don't know in terms of I was Arsenal but Gerrard getting up and down the pitch obviously Rio Ferdinand he's a local boy so just solid and then obviously the years of Vidic my brother's man you are I didn't like Man United, but you couldn't help but watch Vidic, and he was. I think I think that know, part- absolute monster. That partnership with him and Rio was unreal. Yeah. Crazy, he was. A, and that he did get credit, but you don't you don't hear of his name enough. I don't think. Yeah, I think it's because he's obviously that that generation had uh, a lot of English centre backs that mm. were at the top level, and obviously it's the Premier League, so people like yeah, Rio yeah. and John Terry, Saul Campbell, kind of get them the credit more than than video yeah 100 percent. that's true but yeah no nah. um so in terms of football going forwards for the future what's kind of in terms of short-term goals for next season what would you want to kind of do and maybe talk about when football's all said and done what what would you have liked to have achieved well obviously first the forefront of my mind is always fitness i want to be in good condition ready to be reliable whatever level that is because that heartbreak I've had of because people say, oh, you know, a lot of players, oh, you know, he's been injured, this, injured, that. Like, let's get it straight. I didn't choose to be injured. Mm. And secondly, like, I'm devastated. I'm injured and continuously injured because, I'm, one, I'm out for ages. Like, it's, you get slightly depressed with it. And secondly, like, you want to be able to, the more injuries you get, the more you want to prove that 
you know, you are reliable. Like, I use that word a lot, but that's all I want to be. So whether I end up in conference, League Two, League One, wherever it may be, I, I want to knock myself out 40 games plus in a season. But I've got, luckily enough, I've got next year at Crystal Palace, obviously going through these uncertain times with the leagues and finances and stuff like that. We'll have to see how that plays out. But yeah, and then see what the what direction the club want to go in in terms of when we go back. But no doubt, I'll, um, yeah, I'll either finish my time at Crystal Palace after have a conversation and then hopefully find a home. So wherever that may be. But as I'm getting older, obviously, being happy has become more... It's been more of a thing for me because obviously I've moved away so much, Don. It's crazy. I've obviously Scotland two years ago. I've been in Stoke. I've been up and down the country and basically living in living in hotels. So when I got to Scotland, that took a toll on me. I was like, because I wasn't. I've always kind of gone somewhere. And if, if I wasn't injured, I was playing. So I've been lucky, or in and around it. But I went to Scotland. And it didn't work out for me. And I was living in a hotel where none of the boys was around. So I didn't have no. I had no life. I'm like, oh God, I'm 23, 24. Yeah. In terms of that, for your mental health, what what was that feeling like? Obviously, being alone a lot of the time, not playing. How, yeah. did, how did you sort of handle it? Well, listen, I'm open about it. I, I struggled. I um, I ended up having to get my loan terminated because over time, over time, it gradually, I got to a point, I'll fast forward a bit, I got to a point where I couldn't get out of my car to go training. I kid you not. And I thought, and I'm loud, I'm always, you know, in the thick of things. And I thought to me, what's going on? I couldn't. But put it this way, I was... Getting back, so we're trained, obviously, we're, we're privileged to, to finish early. But if you've got nothing going on, and by this point, I wasn't I wasn't going out or having a few bets or whatever I used to do back in the day. So I've like sorted my life out at this stage. And I'm like getting back at one o'clock and I'm like, a bit of PlayStation or, you know, I can't have another meal I've already eaten. So next thing you know, I fell into this pattern of by the end of it, I was sleeping. I'd get in at one o'clock, I'd sleep till seven o'clock. So that's six hours. <laughs> Two, two to six, let's say four hours. Then I'd have food and then I'd be back in bed by like 10, 11 o'clock, sleeping till eight in the morning. So mm-hmm. I was just, yeah, I, I got myself into a bit of a rut really. And then I couldn't, couldn't admit it to myself. And then I started, you know, maybe I will go out this weekend. Maybe I will go out again. And before you know, I'm not playing. I'm going out a little bit more. And then, yeah, just, I got to a point where I kind of confessed to my agent, like, look, like, look I'm, very, very upset here kind of thing, which took a lot of me. And he don't mind me saying, is he, he's, because you admit these things, I was feeling a little bit depressed, but he just couldn't understand it. Because a lot of people, were, unless you've experienced it, or, oh, you know, you've got to brave it out just because the manager's not picking you, all those kind of things. And I was like, it's not that. I've I've told him I'm, I'll keep ploughing through it, but I'm just struggling, I'm struggling. Anyway, I ploughed on for another month or two and it just got worse and worse and worse to a point when I, when I turned up to training one day I had to call in sick because I couldn't get out of my car and I was like no nah, nah, I can't do this anymore I, I basically told Palace and to be fair to them they said look you got to get yourself right come back and I was for a, I'd probably say for two to three months I took two months off football which not a lot of people know and I was just I was just going to quit I thought no, all these injuries I've, put, what, I've, I've been around for six years and played 80 games like what's the point yeah. but that six weeks to two months out really do you know what I mean? Almost like reignited the fire. I thought, you know what, no matter what level, I put so much pressure on myself because of how all them things going back to 16, 17, oh, you know, played for England, done this, done that. I was always putting so much pressure on myself to come back quicker from injuries, do this, do that. Yeah. And you go, on lo- you go on loan to clubs and it's no detriment to them. If you get injured on a loan, they just, they just send you back and then get someone else in. That's how, and that's how it is. Like, I'm not feeling sorry for myself, but that took its toll on me and I just thought, you know, but no, obviously, I'm happy I come back to football. Not come back, I wasn't away, but decided to, to keep plugging on. And obviously, I, think, I really enjoyed my. I think, it's a, I think it's a key to just enjoy your football, firstly. Like, absolutely. Because obviously, like you said, you put a little bit of pressure on yourself through your past experiences, through playing for England and how, how that sort of experience went for you. Now you're a bit older, just enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? And, and uh, the rewards will come because of that. So, yeah, that's that's something I would say to you. Just enjoy it, man. Because no, 100%. A, lot, a lot of people would love, even though, like you said, you, you felt they were low moments for you and being in Scotland didn't really, do you know what I mean? Lots of people would love to be in your shoes. So kind of just embrace it and, and take it yeah, from no, Definitely, definitely. When, when your eyes are open again, like they are now, and obviously, listen, if I had someone like, 
anyone telling me that. But at the time, you're on your own. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're like, yeah, no, all sure. the time. But that's, like, that's what that's what I got back home. I thought, you know what, like, what's what, where have I gone? Do you know what I mean? I used to love, like, I, I do now again, but I used to love playing it anywhere, anytime. Do you know what I mean? Like nowadays, I I love it when I see boys are getting told off. Yeah, you're not allowed to go goals. You're not allowed to do this. I get that from from a club's point of view. But I leave the let the boy. Let the boy play, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I've never had a put the boys want to go and play, kind of goals, play with their mates, like they love the game. And I just wanted to get that back. So, yeah, yeah. no, I'm looking forward to being anywhere and just, just being able to play. Just get uh, yeah. it. In terms of the long term goal and when football's over for you, what, what do you want people to be able to say about Ryan Innes? Uh, I've always, that, that he learned his lesson for, for one, as in terms of conducting himself. And towards the end of my career, like as in like well, this second half of it, obviously, and hopefully get another eight years, was he become reliable? Because listen, if I if I knock out forty games plus for the rest of my career, even if I did play League Two, I, I'd, I'd be very very happy with that. So um, yeah, I just want I've said it a lot on this, but become reliable, and then also in terms of off the pitch, like you know, I've tried to help as many people as I can along the way. At whatever level you are, you don't know who you're going to meet because. I've been fortunate in the players that I've met. Like every loan, I've seemed to have like a, an experienced pro, an older pro that you look at and think. Like for instance, I was at Dundee with Kenny Miller and Michael Brown at uh, Port Bell. Yeah, yeah. And I was, yeah, I'm looking at it. And these lads are in every day and they're doing 100 crunches, 100 press ups, neural stretches before we do pre app. And I'm looking at it thinking, absolute machines. And these are players that are playing at like 40 years of age, 38, 39, 40. And that's not something they just started doing now. They must have been doing that for 10, 15 years, if not more. So it's something I've tried to implement. And listen, I don't do it every day. I'm not perfect, but, you know, I'll try not to skip no prehab. I'll try and do, try and do my weights and just and all my injury prevention. And, and then I've got no excuses because, I, like I said at the start, I used to be, oh, you know, I'm so unlucky. Oh, Ray, you're so unlucky. Yeah, getting injured the first time was unlucky when I'd done my shoulder on one side. I've had... Four, that reoccurred three times. I should be doing more and more and more, you know? Yeah. But then, then it went on the other side, so that was unlucky, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, man. Ryan, uh, I appreciate you jumping on and telling telling your journey so far. And like I said, I, I've always heard a lot about you, but I've never had the, the pleasure of meeting you. So, like, Errol talks about you a lot. People in... Because I'm from Lucian, so people yep. within the local area that are within the system, talk about you, but I've never physically got to see you, meet you. So that'll be, that'll be a good experience when that does come around. But no, first of all, big thank you for jumping on and obviously sharing this journey because, like I said, there's there's a kid out there that's listening or a person out there that can take something away from this and, and adapt it into their own life. So mm-hmm. appreciate you doing that. And to the viewers, I just want to say a big thank you for jumping on and obviously listening to Ryan's story and supporting because obviously without you, it's not possible. But yeah, right. I think I think we're we're sweet, man. I think we're yeah, sweet. Unless you've got sure anything that. else you want to add. And, and no, just... not at all. I just wanted to thank you. And then listen, when, when we can get back out, if you need any help with the coach, you know, you need me to come down and do anything like that. I'm always, if I'm in the area, I'm always about, I'm free, yeah. No, definitely, bro. Thank you for that. I appreciate those words. Um, but yeah, thank you. And everyone, tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow we've got Deji from Charlton jumping on. So that should be a good one. Um, and yeah, we on Sunday we've got Carlton Cole. So yeah, we, we're, we're, we're moving pretty some, good. Some proper players, yeah? Follow me <laughs> up. <laughs> nah, Ryan. It's been a pleasure, bro. Right. Thank you, You man. take care of yourself, yeah?